How's it going guys and welcome back to another episode of Trailmakers Creations by that Dom guy. Today, our first creation, don't these kind of look like tank tracks? A little bit, maybe, maybe? But that's exactly what they are. Bingo! So, uh, slightly different design than what I've worked on before. I have tried doing tank tracks in the past. I'll put a link up here. Click it if you haven't seen that. So this is slightly different. Uh, this uses, again, the same technique of using uh, the quarter round pieces, the small quarter round pieces inside on servos to turn the actual tracks themselves once you disconnect them. They're connected up here, right there, by the detachable blocks. And once they are detached, they become their own thing. One thing I did learn, and uh, it seems to make a difference, is that in the tracks themselves, once you detach them, they become their own creation. So I put a XOR gate on each track and connected to all of the small steering hinges on each track so that once I disconnect them, because those steering uh, hinges are at zero strength. So once you disconnect it, I wasn't sure, I was having a lot of problems with them staying stiff and not relaxing like they had no strength. So I put the XOR gate on there, connected it to them. Now when I detach them, they're listening to the XOR gate knowing that they're supposed to be at zero strength, which is what I've set them to. So I find I have a lot less issues with them, not to say that they're perfect. Uh, they still have uh, issues occasionally, but uh, hey, we can deal with it. For as well as they work, they actually work pretty well like tank tracks. For trail makers, I'm impressed. So let's jump in here. We can see we're on top of this hill here. Let's see if we can drive down the hill and then up that other hill. Wouldn't that be good? Without exploding into a thousand pieces, which is very likely to happen as well. So when we first spawn this thing in, all we need to do is hit space bar to detach. And what we're looking for is the floppiness in those hinges. So I usually hit number one a little bit and then turn it off right away to make sure that those tracks are actually rolling loosely, which they are. There's guides on either side there as well at the top, as you can see, that keep the tracks in the tracks. So we'll hit number one. We do have a little bit of steering with that helicopter engine on top, left and right. Call it tank steering if you want. Let's see, we'll go down the hill, let's see if we can actually roll with functioning tank tracks in Trailmakers. The, the big downside with this build is that it's at 695 complexity. So look at that, controlled speed downhill, it hasn't exploded yet. Yet, being the operative word. Let's see, uphill, can we go uphill? Is it actually like a tank? You'll notice the front rollers and the back rollers as well are on suspension which eases a lot of the pressure in the loose hinges in the tracks so that they don't explode and fall apart. So here we go, creeping up the hill. You can see that suspension working pretty hard in the back there, but that's basically what keeps the tracks on the tracks, uh, keeps them rolling nice and loose without exploding from tension in them itself. So we've got pretty far up the hill. You can see it's fighting to try and go. It wants to. Go, man, go, go, go. Let's push W a little bit. Let's maybe do... Uh-oh, we're losing the track, losing the track. Let's see if we can turn into it, turn into it, turn into it. Oh, no, no, turn this way. No, oh, oh, we're going to lose our tracks. We're going to lose the track. Oh, both sets of tracks. Okay, spin to win. There we go. Now you can see the core without the tracks. So we've got two high rollers in the middle there, and then the end, the front and the back, and the back rollers are high as well. And the bottom rollers are the ones connected to the ground. So that gives a little bit of room to move around and flex, but we're still getting the forward motion. And those are actually set to pretty slow speed. As you can see, they're trying to roll on the ground. But but yeah, complexity limit. That's the downside with that many his small hinges. So let's rebuild. And of course, we'll be back at the spawn point. So let's jump out of here. I doubt this thing would crawl out of the pole. So it's all about this first. Okay, come on, settle, settle down. So, detach. Or, or, ooh, see how those hinges there are not relaxed. They're not at zero. So I'll try and roll and they'll just, yeehaw! Many multiple pieces, buddy. Okay, rebuild. Now the downside with rebuilding is that, remember those tracks are no longer part of the main creation, so they will lay there as garbage. Ouch, ouch. Was that the other track? What does that mean? Let's see if we can roll out of here. Roll out, roll out. Oh, we're merged in with that piece. I hate it when that happens, man. Rebuild on the ashes of the old. Space number one to just go. Just drive. Oh, we're already busted. Already busted. 
But look at this. Just like a tank should. Truck it. And you and me. And it's funny, see, there'll be a busted piece of track like that. And a lot of times it'll just keep on rolling. Yeah, that's not even connected. There's a glitch. Try it. Oh, now it's going in the wrong wheel hole there. Like, oh, oh, yeah, see, that wasn't going to work. Look what you've done to yourself. So, those are the functioning tank tracks. Hard to say functioning when they're doing this, right? Oh, that's perfect, man. That's exactly the way I ordered them. So those will be on the shop. I'll upload those. Let's take a look at our next build. So this vehicle is called the Cat's Eye. Just, yeah. Hey, I make this stuff up as I go, people. Come on, work with me here. So this is basically a flying car, just like we had in a previous video where I made a bunch of different flying cars. I'll put a link to that here. So this one here is, again, uses the old piston glitch to hide. See, we've got big thrusters. We've got dragon thrusters inside these wheel wells. See, ta-da, you cannot see them. So we can jump in here. It's V2L and it's a jet as well. So WASD to drive, just like this. Again, it ain't breaking any speed records. Looks kind of cool though. Those rounded wheels on it like that. And then when you decide that you all done with the driving on the land thing, you can just find a place. Let's head over to the shore here. We're gonna head over to the other side. We head down to the shore down here. And be like, man, this car does not float, but it does fly. So we hit number one. Just fold up like this. And we hit space bar. And up we go. And then we hit number two. And those gonna lean forward. And we're gonna fly away. Just like that. And we can use the actual steering. That's why there's the steering in the body and not in the wheels themselves. So that I can still use the steering for steering. Smart, right? Right? I was thinking. I was thinking about that. So we can come fly down here. Now the trick here, you want to keep your nose down. Keep your nose down. And hit number two. We can go back into a VTOL mode here. We can land. Oh, well, we lost one fin. But number one was back in the car mode and we can just drive away. Just like that is in the body here. You can see number one flips that up there on those hinges, small steering hinges. Number two is the servos that rotate those forward. So we can rotate them forward and then do this, but then you can't BTOL well now, can you? We also got some angle pieces in the body there that help for stability once we're in the air as VTOL and in jet mode. So let's rebuild that puppy. We're going, we're going to, that's, that's where the thrusters are inside. They actually face inwards. It kind of gives a cool effect when you're driving like this. It doesn't make you any faster. It makes you a lot louder though. It's like a spectacle. Look at that. Got me some streaming exhaust. All right, enough with this. Number one, we're gonna keep that thrust going now. Keep it going. We're gonna get ourselves up in the air. Number two, we're gonna fly away. Oh, no, no, hey, 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 number two. Oh, upside down, in the drink. Spit out, cars in half. Don't tell my mom. So that's usually why you wanna sit still while you uh, go in VTOL. I mean, you can try it like this, hit number one, number two right away and thrust. But I do not think that you will take off from the ground unless you go off a jump, maybe. That is a negative. So you always need to do this. Chill steady. Lift yourself off the ground. Check yourself. And then number two. And fly away. It's a little bit rear end heavy. That's okay, it's kind of designed like that. For stability purpose, them fins way out the back like that. Let's fly through the ring of fire. And then we're gonna VTOL. I did not keep my nose down. Hopefully this goes well. And now we're gonna land. We're gonna drive away with no damage. Look at that. They said it couldn't be done. Well, it done it. All right, that is the cat's eye. Guess where that will be? That, that's right, bingo. You nailed it on the shop. All right. On to the next build. So recently I watched Cosmonaut's video on building a ground effects vehicle. He was trying to build one in Trailmakers. I thought it was a good challenge. I'll post a link to that up here as well. If you haven't seen it, check it out. 
Now, he managed to make it work somewhat. I'd say it was like 90% functional, except that it kept gaining elevation. It was really tough to keep it at a certain height above the water. So my brain automatically went, hey, what if we try to use some gimbals, man? We could try to use those with the altitude sensors. That will work, I think, man. Maybe if you can get it to trigger just right. Fine tuning, homes. So I tried it and it worked. If you watch the little GIF on my community tab, then you saw that this thing flies actually very well. It's one button and it does it all itself. A little pulling back on the stick for leveling, but uh, it works pretty well. It looks like a jet. And another thing that Cosmo didn't do in his video was he didn't have any angled pieces, angled wings. You want to create like a small pocket underneath the vehicle to try and trap a pocket of air. That's actually the way a ground effects vehicle works, which is why most of them will have some kind of tilted wing to create a pocket, unlike a hovercraft, which will use a skirt to hold the air of uh, the uh, pressurized air underneath it. All right, let's go into the water and have a look. All right, so once we're in the water like this, all I got to do is hit the space bar. See it slowly rise up. Our little gimbals in the front and in the back as well. Kick in. Stabilizes itself. You'll see them giving a little burst, 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 because it does slowly, slowly want to rise up in the front, but it does not because of those gimbals and the altitude sensors. So this just cruises along at 186 miles an hour, kilometers an hour, slightly above the surface. Now you're thinking, oh, if you go to steer, man, that thing's probably just going to, the wing's going to touch the water and in you go, right? No, 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 it doesn't. Actually, we use the touching wing tip to actually turn us, help us turn. Because you got to remember, we have enough lift and we have enough speed that the wings want to keep us up. But those gimbal jets and the altitude sensors are saying, uh, uh, uh. So you can see the touching of the water actually helps with the steering. And we don't lose too much speed. We don't do a big nosedive. Mind you, I'm not uh, using W or S, just A and D, and then when you let go, it'll just level itself out. And again, we can turn back this way. If you rock too much or hit W or S, like pull back or forward, could end up getting into a feedback loop. But as far as racing over the surface like this, this works very, very well. So this is called the Angel Fire. This will be on the shop as well. I may have already uploaded it, maybe up there right now. So that worked really well. So I'm in the process of trying to see how big of a vehicle like this, a ground effects vehicle, I can make. Another thing with these ground effects vehicles is designed to be over a flat surface, especially this one, because those gimbals are set for one meter. If I go over land, uh, that's too high, man. That's not the same height as the water. And look at this, see? It not function properly, man. You avoid the warranty, homes. So that was a pretty straightforward build as far as structure, but the fine tuning is where it comes in. Where you position the wings in the front and the back. As you can see, I got some small wings and some full size wings. And then you're just all about the weight where you want to balance a small piece here, a small piece there, as far as forward and backwards. And then always trying to keep your thrust in line with your center of mass so that it's always pushing forward and not pushing you up or down. Oh, here we come back around to the land again, the thing it did not learn its lesson. All right, Angel Fire, about to bite the dust. Oh, called it. All right, take a look at our next build. Bizarre. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy, wake up. How's it going, buddy? How's it going? You want to go for a fly? You want to go flying? Yeah? Have you been a good boy? Oh, what'd you do, man? Oh, okay. Well, are you going to do that again? Oh, well, that's good. That's good. We want to go flying, though, right? Okay. Are you ready? You want to go flying? You want to go flying? Are you ready to go flying? Okay, here we go. Oh, you're ready, eh? Okay. So this is... Oh, 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 come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. This is the Firewing Dragon Chopper. As you can see, why it's called that? 
made a video earlier uh, with the dragon chopper in it, and I decided when I built that one that I wanted to try and make a big one like this. And I did. So here it is. Ta-da! So he has a lot of expression. As you can see, we got some uh, mad scientist blocks there on his chin. So when he opens his mouth, gets a nice little glowy face going on. We got four sets of helicopter blades. And they've only got two on each, so we I could still add another four to each of those blades if we needed more lift, but this is just fine. You can see on his back here that we've got six mini jets. That is activated by number two. And that doesn't add a whole bunch of extra speed. Doesn't really change the flight capabilities or anything like that, but it does give it a little bit more forward thrust. So that's kind of nice. So wings bend up like that with number one. So we can level his wings off and we can still fly. We actually fly a little bit faster when his wings are level like this. We have articulation in the head and the neck and the tail that are all connected with WASD. And we have the automatic landing gear, which is his legs, which are along the body there on the top. See there. And rather than building wings, I figured, hey, you know what? If I can make the flames the same shape as this arch, It'll look like he's got nice big wings. And we can throttle our helicopter blades to basically make them hover. So a lot of lift there. And let's see if we can land them right back down here. Okay, we've got to turn the thrusters off. Okay, bring her around nice and easy. It's like, jump, like flying a huge helicopter, right? So... Okay, come on down. See, the legs will come out. We can actually land. And I believe the damage that we took is when we took off when I first built him in, and that's that missing uh, mad scientist block on his chin. Yeah, you tell him, buddy. So he's got a lot of personality. You can see a lot of those little horns there from the cosmetic section. The antlers. Uh, when you push down on his head as well, he's got those fins on either side that angle down. That helps during flight as well for steering, going left and right. Uh, we've got lots of shark fins on his body for uh, extra scales. Yeah, that's it. Have a fit, buddy. Just arr, 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 arr. Yeah, okay. Rebuild. Rebuild yourself, man. Get your poop in a group. Yeah. So number two, that's the thrusters. Number one lifts his wings up like this which changes the trajectory a little bit, but uh, doesn't change his flight capabilities. So that's always nice that you can uh, change the wing shape and he still flies. And just the space bar, yep. There's a sensor in the body there that lifts his legs for the automatic landing gear. They just fold back out of the way. And there you go, Dragon. This is not armed, there's no cannons or anything on it. You could put a couple of explosive cannons on it and uh, have yourself some Dragon Wars. Imagine two or three of these in the air, different color, fighting each other. Just put one explosive cannon on each, and uh, good luck with that, because dog fighting is super tough. Dragon fighting is even tougher. If you agree, leave a comment down below. Down below. That's where it's at. It's down below. Can we land on this? Hey, hey, hey. Well, we can land on our own. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Not gonna happen. We got that barrel though. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Lean back a little bit. Oh, don't break a foot. Break a foot. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Oh. Now he's sad. All right, guys. We're gonna leave that one here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't hit subscribe already, do that down below. Don't forget to smash that like button. Leave a comment. Let me know which one was your favorite build in this video. And we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.